podcast is going to put me to shame because probably just a little longer, um, Ethan has been climbing a little longer than me. <laughs> and he's <progressed laughs> quite a bit. So yeah. he's accomplished in probably two and a half, probably three years, um, coming just over two yeah. years. Just um, three now, yeah. From beginner to uh, V14, something like that. Yeah. And I'm climbing in the gym. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <I'm free. laughs> so welcome, Ethan. Glad to have you. Yeah, on. thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, yeah, and uh, what do you, do you have anything to add? Oh, to the beginning? Yeah. Uh, it, this is Live Wild Radio. <laughs> uh, so yeah. this, is, this is the second in our series of like Zoom interviews because you're not allowed to hang around with human beings anymore. Um, so that's pretty much it. That's all I'm adding. Okay. It's all good right. to, good to tell right. people what they're listening to. Yeah. And I'm so Winston. Yeah. I'm Catherine. Yeah. And this is Ethan Selby. I'm yeah. Ethan. Yeah. <laughs> so for Canadian climbers who, you know, any climbers, but, you know, we are Canadians. Yeah. Uh, who who uh, read um, Gripped Magazine or Gripped website. I don't know if it's a magazine anymore. <laughs> I don't know. If... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. It's the COVID. Uh, good that you're not yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Basically, they would have read about you, you know, over the last few years. Um, yeah. Because uh, if I'm not mistaken, you've done pretty much all the 12s, the V12s that are there? Uh, there's, I think, one left. This, like, uh, Alex Magos thing that he put up last winter that I'm, like, painfully close on. So Yeah, so just one at the moment. Yeah. yeah. Which and then a couple sense. projects. Yeah. So let let's we'll take a sort of a step back. Like uh, yeah, you commented about how you you relatively, um, you know, short life in climbing so far. Yeah. So being that it's only a few years, let's go back to sort of how you got into athletics and then how you got into climbing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, like you read the articles and like you know. Grip magazine headline is like V13 in three years or something but I always like people are like how you progress so fast in three years that's crazy and like the one thing I always go back to is like well you know I was like doing seven years of training before that I was just a competitive swimmer instead of a rock climber you know so uh, I was seven years old I started uh, I joined a swim team basically both of my parents are triathletes and uh, endurance athlete so I got into it pretty quickly and then up until uh, how old would I have been maybe around nine or ten I started swimming competitively and then in grade nine was my grade nine or grade ten was my last year of competitive swimming so uh, it's a pretty large sport so I was really only competing at like a provincial level but even at that standard like I was training nine times a week, even though there's only seven days. And I was around like 21 hours of training each week. So I kind of just like burned out. Uh, then in grade 10 or so, uh, I remember one of the older students, uh, Ben Mueller, if he's watching this, he's kind of the one responsible for me getting into climbing. He kind of started up the climbing club slash team at the high school. I remember thinking like, oh, you know, I'd like done a couple birthday parties and gone with family once or twice. Like it was always fun. And, you know, I feel like most people that, you know, are long-term climbers now, you know, like went into the gym my first day and was like, whoa, I'm really enjoying this. Like got a membership. And then every day since then until now, I've been going to the gym a few times a week. So what does your uh, workout schedule look like each week? Like break that down for us. Oh man. Um, you know, when I started climbing, it was like, I'm just going to go climbing whenever I want and just have fun. Uh, when I was on a, like the competitive team at the gym, that was like four times a week kind of. So it'd be like, you know, two days on or no, it wouldn't have been Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then one day on the weekend with the team. And then I would go climbing outside on rest days, kind of, um, not exactly. But now, like, I've started working quite a bit this fall. Um, 
So I've kind of like become a bit of a weekend warrior, as funny as that is for me to say. I never would have thought that would have been me this early, but now I, I kind of just climb like whenever I have time. I still try and get like my, you know, average thing is like climb two days in a row, one rest day, and then two more days, and then two rest days. And that kind of like hits a week. And then that breaks down into like day one and day four of the week are typically like high intensity on the fingers and like strength training and then like day two and day five would be more like uh volume based and you know we're working on skills and stuff yeah so obviously most people are never even going to get it no matter how long they've been climbing yeah i started climbing in the 80s uh, yeah and now i've always been sort of more drawn to bigger stuff outdoors yeah uh, definitely but it's a case where like the the hardest thing I've ever done was like a 512 you know on rope climb yeah and that was took like an entire season of just working on yeah and it was like uh, it's the the whole projecting thing just was never for me you know because it, yeah enough. <laughs> yeah that's really like you know yeah because you like you when you hear about somebody like like uh Adam Andra going back yeah. to like Norway like four years, years, years. three years in yeah. a row I I commend anybody because I don't have that patience yeah <laughs> um, yeah so how did it go from okay this climbing thing's cool I got a membership yeah to where you are now you know like what, yeah. what was the progression like total grade chaser in the gym like totally like walked in there with oversized shoes and was just like what's the hardest number I want to do it like no matter what and I have like old videos of me climbing on my phone from like 20 late 2017 early 2018 and they're just like so messy you know I would go in and just like I would project basically like my whole mentality was like I want to be the best one here like no matter what you know, so for me at that time, the best one there was like whoever can, you know, climb the hardest number mm. at whatever cost, you know. So I would just like go and flail up a wall for three hours. And like, I remember like walking into the gym in March 2018 and there's like this black V7 on like flat holds in this arch at the hub. And I remember like on my March break, I would go in, I went for like five days straight or something. It just like threw myself at this thing. And just like burn through all my skin. And I, it's just, I think that sort of has always been a thing. You know, I just like want to climb really hard. I think it's just sort of evolved over the years into like a, a more mature standpoint to climbing in the sense of like, oh, like, you know, now I'm getting my butt kicked on this V5 slab. Like, I'll go put like eight sessions into it so I can get good. Um, so I think it's always been uh, a trait. I think just in the past year and a half or two, instead of like focusing on being the strongest I've I've kind of realized that you know I need to be good not necessarily just strong so kind of like focusing still on like you know one goal and projecting really hard but I've sort of just like learned what it takes mm -hmm. so I think you know it's always been there I've just sort of needed to add to it and take all these different elements of climbing and training and implement them all into one thing to like you know hit the next goal did that discipline perseverance um come from your past competitive uh yeah you know events with swimming yeah Anything? definitely yeah. yeah for sure so you'd say that you know to make those kind of strides it's definitely mental and how much of your physical shape do you think like you know your strength that you already had from swimming did that help you for climbing? yeah oh totally um i would bet i'm like definitely a lot stronger now but like not far off from what I was swimming physically the only thing I really needed was like everything elbow down right mm -hmm. like no one really has like great finger strength right off the bat I have always said I think I have naturally strong fingers but even then like it still needs to build up but physically from swimming like yeah it definitely helped um and on top of that like the mental side of just like suffering suffering yeah yeah, like oh. as stupid as it sounds. Yeah. So this is a this is more of a solo thing then. Like it's not like you have a team of people around you, you know, that you support each other and you encourage each other to do more. It's really just you and the wall. Yeah, somewhat. I mean, like 
that's not to say I don't have like my crew of friends and we all like get really psyched you know and we all like push each other to do better and you know there's sort of like some competition going on like between a few of us like you know we're all working the same project and we're kind of like going at it but I think uh the side that swimming taught me was really more like the personal drive yeah so obviously with swimming it'll really help like strengthen the shoulder um, yeah um yeah but you know you run into that thing where where progressing as quickly as you you have have you been able to avoid like the finger tendon injuries that are so common yeah honestly i i've been really like grateful that i haven't had anything serious um and i would you know once again put that to like naturally strong fingers or whatever you want to call it but yeah like the worst stuff I've had it's been like you know pull too hard on a hold and like you know it's like minor tweak of a finger wouldn't climb for like a couple days but yeah it's like typical bouldering thing now like my mobility is just messed up like my middle fingers don't close and I'm kind of just like all right. I'm stuck <laughs> yeah yeah like that's about all the middle finger goes down it's you know, like it's like locked in at yeah, it's like all the scar tissue built up in the joint, and I just, I don't know, it's probably a concern. It definitely is, but <laughs> I've always, like, jokingly been like, oh, there's just more bone, and my finger doesn't move, so the bone holds the weight instead of the tendon now, so I'll just climb harder, but, you know, totally not scientifically proven yeah. at all. No research behind that, but just, you know, my little thought. <laughs> well, because that's always one of the, the biggest sort of drawbacks. Like, when I... um like a mentoring new people into climbing yeah the things i say is like you can't touch a fingerboard for two years right? yeah three or four times a week because you just need to build yeah. that natural because muscles come quickly and tendons don't yeah know? exactly yeah uh, and i think um another reason i was able to avoid that was i understood that concept a lot like if i wanted to get good at crimps I wouldn't like hit a hangboard. You know, I get a lot of people that are like, you know, how do you like get strong fingers? What should I be doing? And it's like, well, I don't know. My training philosophies are really simple. Like if you want to get good at climbing on crimps, like you should just go like climb on crimps on a 45 and mm -hmm. that's how you'll get good at climbing on them. You know, like obviously it's not going to build a lot of strength, but you'll get good at it. So yeah, for my first two years, like for the most part, if I was given like, we're going to, you know, like do this finger program, I would be really hesitant to do it and like quite on, like I would just remember a lot of like training sessions where I would go into the gym and we would like have training and I would do it but I would also kind of just like do my own thing mm -hmm. and I think you know it's really I'm like really happy I was able to avoid it but I think it's a really easy mistake that a lot of people uh do well it, basically like I've uh, a coach for for various types of athletics yeah things. and one of the biggest things that i run into is uh, as a coach my first job is to make sure people don't get hurt yeah uh, because you run into that thing where um people who are chasing progress so fast uh can run into the thing where rather than sort of play a slow and steady game they yeah it's like an up and down game. yeah and then you're out for six weeks yeah at, at best you know and that sucks yeah yeah so how do you manage that do you have any mentors that help you uh along the way from an injury standpoint well like structuring your training so yeah. you don't get injured and, and performance to really get yeah i mean a lot of it has been on my own like i was with the climbing coach for you know like i was on a competitive team for year year and a half but that was like year two basically so year one and three, like year one, I kind of just did whatever. In the past year, though, I've really been pushing for myself to kind of just like read a lot, uh, talk to other friends and, and get their advice. So I w don't know if I would contribute it to like one singular person, but I try and force myself to read a little bit. And also just like, I try and be aware of my body quite a bit, like trying to know what I am capable of and like I think most injuries in, in fingers at least are typically like an overuse injury so you're just doing too much at once and then you know your fingers are tired you go to like pull on something small at the end of the day and then just like 
tendon explodes or something. So I just try and avoid that scenario at all costs. You know, like it'll be the end of like a three hour session on my second day on and I'll be like, oh man, like I really want to keep working on the simulator. Like I really want to keep trying it. It feels so good today. And I'm kind of just like, oh, you know, it's not really worth the risk. Because, like, I love climbing. Why would I want to get injured and not climb? I don't think anyone does. Yeah. But, but didn't you say earlier you, you, like to, you like to suffer? Yeah, but in a controlled way. In a controlled way. Yeah. Talk about that. What is it? What, what, how do you define suffering? Oh, in climbing? Yeah. Like, in the weirdest way, just, like, mangling my fingers on sharp holds. I don't know. I have a weird thing for, like, like really sharp, small grips. <laughs> You'll hear a lot of people that talk about me be like, yeah, that's kind of my thing. It's like sharp crimps, but I don't really, I like trying hard. I don't know if it's like the suffering standpoint and not necessarily like the physical way, but like the mental way, like, mm. you know, it'll be winter and it'll be like January 1st. And we're like, oh, let's go to like Glen for New Year's. It'll be like minus 10, <laughs> right? Or like going bouldering and like doing projects and like, negative 15 temperatures and you're like freezing your butt off in three layers of the heater and you're like this sucks but you know like it's so much fun and we're all laughing yeah kind of that way too mm -hmm. yeah if you like if you like sharp crimps uh go climbing down in mount oh, charleston yeah. in nevada mount charleston okay uh sport now, stuff yeah it's limestone yeah and yeah right basically we were just doing like this roadside craig when we were down there last year yeah uh and you know how, like, if you're climbing something that you have no beta on, you sort of feel the rock? Oh. Yeah. It was so sharp that I thing. could my fingertips open just rubbing my hand over it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's crazy. Like, the holds are very positive. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know. We all got some bite. Yeah. Like, it literally, like, it, like tiny little razor blades. And it's funny because it's yeah. not. Yeah. All of our yeah. work in Ontario is polished to shit. So polished and smooth. Yeah uh this is and it's all jagged and broken um interesting whereas the down there it's like you'd swear if you looked at it from the distance it's yosemite granite like it, oh it, wow it <laughs> like that this monolithic yeah limestone. um yeah and it's sharp as shit it's just sharp wow <laughs> so it, it was one of those things it's like this isn't the limestone i grew up on <laughs> yeah um, so if you like sharp yeah. that's a, you know cool. and you know, yeah Thing because it's all limestone everything everywhere is just grid bolted uh, right you know and it was funny because we were like uh went up to robber's roost which is like this climbing area that was where bank robbers or stagecoach robbers used to hide okay out in cowboy days oh wow <laughs> and you have like an ethan pringle like 515 cave route um yeah next to like a five eight on, on the vertical face it's hilarious like, <laughs> you know like, I think it's like you know like kind of a, a moderate kind of warm-up climb versus, yeah and then the hard thing the yeah really and then hard thing. Like right next yeah. to that, 511 and then there's a 12 and then like but these huh. beautiful limestone caves yeah um, the big roof you know you start like big vertical into this big roof finish so out over been the lip 80 100 feet yeah wow you know yeah. you know so it's, huh. it's kind of, and but you need to bring a mat because there was still snow on the ground even though it was right like 25 degrees out <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know it's it's yeah. a good thing when you're up in the mountains but yeah definitely oh that's all yeah. above me i can't even imagine rope climbing you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's go back because obviously you started in the gym when did you go outside? yeah um oh man so I have videos of me in the first time in the Glen in the summer of, what have been, summer 2018. I went once with like a, one of my friends who had a guidebook and a couple crash pads. And like my dad took us all out and we had like, I had no clue what I was doing, you know? Like I'm the, I was the person that I now look at and I'm like, oh, do they know where they're going? You know, like I was like, didn't know how to use the guidebook. Uh, I didn't act, I had the old PDF at that time, which like compared to the new guidebook, it's horrible. So I was walking around like trying to figure out what things were. And yeah, I didn't go back until that winter. Um, so yeah, first time was in the summer. And then in the winter, uh, I guess like friend and mentor now, my buddy Jack kind of was like, yo, like, do you want to come out 
let's get you on this hard boulder. Um, and I was like, oh, that sounds pretty hard. Like, I don't know what it was like. And I went that day and I almost did this boulder in like a session. It was like blown away with how well I did. And after that day, I was like instantly hooked. And with Jack, Jack was able to kind of like show me the area, show me the boulders. And I kind of like got to see a bunch of things and was like, okay, like this is cool. And then uh, from then could only go whenever I could get a drive and convince my dad to go or like need someone else that was going. But once I got my license in like June, it was kind of game over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I, I jokingly say I've probably spent like upwards of $500 on gas, if not more driving to the Glen. Yeah. Cause you, you live yeah. in North of Toronto. Yeah, I'm Markham, which is like hour 52 hours to the Glen, depending how it is. So it's like 30 bucks in gas every time I go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and it's a thing where like any listeners or viewers, you know, cause yeah, because yeah, uh, who aren't familiar with uh, like Ontario, we essentially have two bouldering spots mm-hmm. um, outdoors. Yeah. At the Glen and then halfway log dump up on the Bruce Peninsula. Yeah, the known ones, at least. I mean, I know there's stuff, like, up in Sudbury now, and there's a little bit in Ottawa. But, yeah, for, like, GTA climbers, definitely. Yeah, like, basically, for any of us in southern Ontario. Like yeah, so. there's nothing else in between. You know, uh, and so it becomes one of these things where, uh, because we've only got these two areas, and one of them is, like, three hours away. Yeah. You know, you really go into that same spot over and over and over again <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. we basically it's just down the road from niagara falls mm-hmm. yeah no one really yeah no one knows it's there yeah at least last year yeah um and so you you run into the thing where you where you park then there's this big metal glass staircase god yeah <laughs> which, Going down is not a big deal, but at the end of the no, day... No, it's going up. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, yeah. pads. Yeah, I have some fun stories. <laughs> and then it's like a maze of broken limestone. Oh, it's a beautiful area. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, when I took my dad there, he was kind of blown away. He really likes hiking and the outdoors too. And I didn't know what to expect. And we got down there that summer and we're just like blown away, like... You know, it's like five minutes from the falls. Like, who knows about this place? And the water's beautiful, like, really scenic area. Um, and so my dad, when I didn't have my license, would always, like, drive down with the dog and he'd go hike. It's a beautiful area. It's, you know, like, as much as we complain about it and be like, oh, the climbing's so shit and, you know, like, it's so horrible. It's a really beautiful spot. I've, like, definitely try and take moments here and there to like step back and be like oh wow this is really awesome well and the thing that i look at is like if you can climb in ontario and this is whether it's roped climbing on the escarpment or bouldering anywhere else you go the rock's better Uh, honestly yeah and if you go anywhere else there's probably texture which means that you're gonna climb really well like, I went to Squamish in the summertime and was like, <laughs> I can put, like, my foot wherever I want and it doesn't matter, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. Is like, when we when we had Reg Smart on the show. Yeah. He ran into the same thing, which is he learned, like I did, you know, to climb here in Ontario on limestone. And you go to Red Rocks or you go, you know, he's been to Yosemite. Yeah. You go to these different places where you know you've got sandstone or granite or even limestone in other places like yeah Houston, and yeah. all of a sudden it's like your feet aren't slipping off everything yeah it's <laughs> easy yeah you know so it, it is it's one of those uh kind of things where learning to climb here almost it's, sets you up to climb anywhere totally yeah we have uh one of our friends a male in quebec is like, he always rips on how bad the area is, and he's kind of just like, oh, it's just, like, training for real rock climbing. And I was like, oh, like, ah, oh, that's funny. And then, yeah, when I went to Waco, and, like, I've been to enough places now and climbed on, like, a couple different types of rock, and I'm like, yeah, he's certainly not wrong, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, that's why my footwork got good. It was just, like, climbing on really polished, glassy footholds for, like, two years. And you go in the gym, and it's like, well, everything is big and textured, and it's all 
really straightforward. Yeah, it definitely helps. I noticed that you were showing me last time and you have them on your on your wall. You, you're yeah. making folds now and they're all very- Yeah, strange. quite a few. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, you're pretty much mimicking the- uh, um, The same rock style. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, yeah, they're all like, oh, it's funny because like when I've like learned so much about woodworking in the past like eight months because of like being in COVID and not having much to do. But yeah, like some of the hardwoods are super dense, so there's not much texture. So even though it's not sanded up to a very high grit, it's still like climbing on glass. Mm -hmm. Like you, I don't know if you've noticed it in Ontario too, but like it's hard to climb and it's really physical in a weird way because like your skin can't hang on the holds. You kind of need to always be engaging. Yeah. Otherwise, you're kind of just going to slip at times. Well, then it's that's like a that's very, funny. yeah. I love when we do travel, like we, we, yeah, mostly to the States, like when you go to the Adirondacks or, yeah. you know, you go down to Red Rocks, basically you do get a bit of that break because you literally can use the friction of your skin. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's hilarious. Where, yeah. and, and it's even the thing I find like, uh, say like a stemming smeary move. Yeah. You have to have so much tension through your hips on, yeah. on limestone to hold it. Yeah. Because your yeah, feet versus if it's anything else, yeah, totally. Um, and it's the same thing. Like, uh, if there's anything slabby, you're just please, 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 please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like even the easy slab boulders are really hard because everything needs to be perfect. Like, um, and not even in like you have to place your foot on the right crystal but your hips need to be in the right spot and you can't squeeze because then you're just going to like dry fire off the glass immediately. Yeah. It's like, like all of this doesn't make it sound like a, a, a good area. No, but it's like the sort of thing where people are like, Oh, you know, like it sounds horrible. Why would I come? And I'm like, well, I think everyone needs to experience it once because you have a lot to learn in that style because you'll go, you know, you'll come here for a week, you'll maybe get your butt kicked and you'll go back and everything will be straightforward. That's interesting because um, you're right. It's all about different styles in climbing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. This, this climb, this, you know, problem is teaching you balance or it's teaching you overhang or whatever. Yeah. So um, that's very cool. So what is it that you're, what's your, what are you chasing right now? Like, what is the scale that you're working on? Oh, um, I mean, I have a lot of like, I have a really big goal for next year and I kind of like to take it to the next step. Like I need to be a physically a lot stronger. Uh, but I also just like, I really need to get good at slab again. Actually not again. I just need to get good at slab because I've always sucked at it. Um, and there's like a couple boulders that I really want to do that have like really big heady slab top it. So I'm kind of now going to focus on like when I'm inside, I'm going to be doing my strength stuff. And when I go outside, I'm going to try and like, you know, pick a couple things each day that are like way below my physical limit, but are way above my technical limit. So like climbing really big, easy things, even if it's like, you know, like a 40 foot five, four slab at the end of a boulder problem, like climbing that instead of just dropping off or like going and doing like a V3 slab instead of like going and running laps on V12, like I normally would. Mm -hmm. Because now there's just like everything that's left for the most part is either like way too hard and I'm just not really psyched enough for it or it's just not good. Um, and then outside of that is all of like all 700 boulder problems that aren't double digit and I need to climb those and learn how to get good at climbing. Yeah. Cause it, one of the things you run into, I find when you get climbers that are super strong, um, and Emily Harrington talked about this when she yeah. is because you're really strong. Then when you climb 510, you know, yeah. You know, v5 v6 you suck because you just power your way through it yeah exactly and yeah 
ran into the thing when you're doing that, like multiple pitches of that on a 3,000 foot wall. Yeah, you get tired. Yeah. So no yeah, matter definitely, you know, and it, no individual thing is that hard for you. Yeah, it makes you have to climb more economical efficiently. Yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> which will then make when you actually climb harder stuff, you climb better. Yeah. And if you watch videos of me climbing last summer, I was like still quite all in the arms. And, you know, in March, I just like watched hundreds of hours of Dave Graham bouldering, as stupid as it sounds, because when you watch him climb first, like watching Chris or Daniel climb the same boulder problem, like he'll just find a crazy drop knee somewhere and just like find the best way to climb it instead of like relying on strength and cutting feet. So I was typically always like, you know, strength and cutting feet. And then for the past like eight months, I've kind of focused on, you know, like what's the best way I can climb this? Like, how can I, like, I've done this boulder problem. Now, how can I master it and like climb it perfectly? And just getting that practice in, I've already noticed, like when I go to a new boulder, I'm kind of looking for things. It's kind of like, you know, there's like this left hand crimp and I have to do a really deep lock off. It'd be great if there was like a far right foot that I could throw a drop knee off with this low left foot to reach up, mm -hmm. like pull my hips into the wall. Before I would have just been like, oh man, I need to just like crank off this thing and hit the next one. And I need really strong fingers so I can cut feet. But now I've kind of like got myself stuck because I've moved so far that like Dave Graham wizardry side that I haven't really, like I've kind of lost like that pulling hard side. Like I still have really strong fingers. I just don't have the dynamic power that I used to have. So now I'm kind of like working back. It's like a wave. You can't really be good at everything at once. Yeah, it's periodization, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. And the, and the key comes in is that if there's a project you're working on. You like, gotta time it right. Yeah, and whatever, yeah. whatever skills or strengths it needs, getting them all maximized for that day. Yeah. Like, that, window that you're going to work on yeah that. exactly um, yeah you know and and that's one of the things that's kind of cool with uh the physical movement side of it when you've mm -hmm. learned a new skill uh when you go back to working on just getting stronger the skill doesn't go away no you keep it exactly yeah. you know and that yeah. whereas strength if you don't work it it goes away <laughs> yeah. yeah um and so it's one of those things where you develop a bigger toolbox of skills. Yeah. And then, then go, you through phase go and, and apply it longer. And now you yeah. can. Yeah. No, totally. Yeah. And go ahead. No, you finish. Oh, you know, and that that's kind of the fascinating thing because really when you think like, if I'm not mistaken, like the hardest boulder problems in the world are V18 right now. Yeah. There's a one V17 in finland oh okay so it's yeah seven. so yeah basically the the this problem that you did recently like you graded a v14 yeah uh i didn't like go full force and be like 14 immediately i kind of gave it the slash and then talked to a few people after i mean immediately once i did it like if you look at my online scorecards and whatever like it's logged at 14 mm -hmm. um but yeah that's a whole nother conversation yeah like the grading yeah like you know it's a yeah it's a headache yeah well you know and that but it's sort of the best thing we have right yeah there's no good grading system there never yeah. will be you know um but it, it, what i'm getting at though is like after three years you're kind of knocking on the door uh of you know basically yeah not far from the top uh, yeah somewhat you know and obviously it's, it's, even though it's only a few grades. It's a it, lot of work. Yeah. yeah it's a lot of <laughs> you start to like that. Yeah. Um, totally. But more getting to the thing of like, uh, but you're still really young. Uh, yeah. You know, so, so what I look at is do you sort of look at the thing of figuring out a way of doing this professionally? Uh, oh man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, not in school right now um i've like jokingly said to friends that i won't go to school until i climb v16 you know like as stupid as it sounds like uh right now i'm pretty much just focusing on climbing because i know like my personality is 
if I'm doing something, I like always commit a hundred percent and like go all in. So right now, yeah, I'm working and just like saving money as much as I can to travel. Mm. But yeah, like to make it a professional thing, like I have a lot to improve on. Like I'm pretty bad at the social media side of things. Like I need to get better at that. And I also just need to like travel and climb a lot more hard things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. but, but the fact that nowadays that's like a legit thing you can do. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff to do with it. Even just in the climbing world in general, yeah. like it's grown enough now that there's a lot of things happening and a lot of jobs, you know, because, well, if you look like 10 years ago, uh, people who made their living off of climbing, right. Whether it's yeah. you know, the personality, the social media, the competitions, you know, because all of it fundamentally, or a big chunk of it is going to come down to sponsorships, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you run into that thing where uh, it's a viable way to make a living. Uh, yeah. You know, if yeah, you, nowadays. Yeah, if you can engage with people, and that and that, that's sort of that thing of the social media. Yeah. You know, but if you if you look like not even Alex Honnold, because after the movie, it's like people are just throwing money at him. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But but it's the thing like the uh, and not even sort of like some of the the you know real top level ones like the Andres and what have you. Because again, yeah, um, same thing. You know, but people who are uh, you know from whether it's a competition side or a, or a climbing side a level two or down from them are still making a living. Yeah. That, that to me is like a fascinating thing where you can take the thing you love. And uh, make money. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. as an athlete, your biggest thing is you need time to train and take yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? So being able to, to uh, navigate that, like that's a whole different side of it. Yeah, but yeah, gonna, that's yeah. the sort of thing I'm trying to understand now and, and figure out. It's definitely, like, going from high school to now, like, oh, shit, I need to get my life together, and, like, what am I going to do in the next five years? It's a big jump, but, like, slowly figuring out what's possible and what I need to do to get there. So on that note, um, you talked about different kinds of training and how you've had to pivot. So from yeah. perspective both to get to the next level, right? Or to progress in a certain area or even yeah. to make this all work. How has your mental training shifted? Like what, what does that look like? What is that, you know, um, for example, I, I just found it fascinating with climbing how after taking a break because of COVID, right? And I mean, yeah. indoors or outdoors, irregardless. So you're, you're weaker. But when I got back on the wall in the past, I was afraid of heights. And this time, yeah. nothing whatsoever like I was able to yeah. keep back, not have to like if I'm on a rope not worry about testing it to make sure it's working you yeah. know <laughs> focus right and I just find that fascinating how that if anything gets stronger it gets more even more focused right yeah um then then you losing some of it it's not like strength it, it's always there mm -hmm. it's almost like you've changed permanently and now you're that much better and you just don't know it yet so yeah about that yeah, uh, I think the biggest thing for me, like, in the past three months has been working. I mean, like, I finished high school. I didn't really, I couldn't work because of COVID. The gym was closed. And then in September, pretty much, like, right after I did um, Rite of Passage Low, I, like, started a new job at Hold Emporium. So I'm there now. I'm basically, like, uh, doing a bunch of hold production and pouring polyurethane and lots of cool fun stuff but my biggest story was like oh crap like I kind of have a more steady job now like how am I going to have time to climb and my biggest thing was okay like let's not like I didn't want to keep aiming to progress because in my mind I was like if I keep expecting to get better like if I don't get better I'm gonna like you know be kind of bummed out so through that whole period of like work slowly ramping up my goal was just to like keep climbing at the same level and like instead of climbing four days a week it was like let's aim to do three and be happy with three for now and if I can get four that's awesome but 
just to like keep pushing and pushing and pushing like it's a lot on my brain it's like oh crap like you know nine to five one day get home and then it's like oh like I don't want to climb and instead of me being like no like you need to climb because you're going to get weak otherwise it's just like oh like it's okay I'll just rest today uh because rest is a good thing mm -hmm. but from like the mental side of it just being okay with like being busy and like just staying where I was instead of trying to push forward and now like I've kind of adapted to that workload and you know I'm like used to going to work and being tired a little more uh so it's kind of balanced out now and now I can focus on like ramping back up mm -hmm. well and I think one of the things too is that progress is never linear yeah you know it's one of these things where it's like you put your reps in and don't seem to almost be getting anywhere. Yeah. And then one day you get somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I made some progress. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I had like, one of those moments yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's you know? always fun. Yeah, because it, 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 th this is the thing. Because, like, I, I started lifting weights when I was 12 because, you know, yeah. I that bullied kid. So, yeah. Judo and weights were sort of my answer to bullies. Yeah. Uh, but it's the thing where, like, if you made linear progress, um, everybody would squat a thousand pounds or more, right? Because, yeah, <laughs> you know, because if you, yeah, because you would keep getting better. Yeah. And it never works that way. Yeah. Right. It's like you seem to be, you know, you're putting the time in, you're putting the work in. And the better you are, the smaller the improvement steps end up being. Yeah. And you can't maintain like an elite level year round yeah so yeah, it's you've got kind your of thing of like time um, of the year you know, as long as it i always like equate it to the stock market yeah right? as long as you're trending up yeah that's a good thing a period of years you're gonna be better yeah right and you know the fact is right now you're you know really good <laughs> yeah uh, so then it, you keep doing that kind of thing and avoid getting injured yeah and then it's kind of like oh okay well what can i do yeah you know? exactly um, what's the next bit and then yeah. up yeah and, totally. you know, and it, it really is it's kind of fascinating because it's not a sport even though the sport's been around for a long time yeah like if you want to know how to uh add weight to your squat there's like 60 years of yeah you know, there's studies data behind it totally you know and, and there'll be people arguing with some of the, like, 5% differences in the weeds. Yeah. But but it's something we understand very well. Yeah. Whereas, you know, if you look at climbing, it's only in the last few years that, you know, PhDs are studying some of this stuff. Yeah. And, you know, getting into, like, you know, the strain gauges. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, Basically, you sort of look at the work that uh, uh, Tom Whitaker, you know, with lattice training, yeah. doing, you know, they basically, based on how hard you can pull on their machine. Yeah, you can put a number to that. This is how hard you can climb. And yeah, I look at those numbers hard, all the time. Climb that yeah. hard, the technique sucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah. And, you know, and that's kind of like that, that pooling of data, then we're going to start getting more of that, uh, you know, understanding of like, oh, okay, you know, this is how to build it. And with it becoming an Olympic sport as well. It's just going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's a question with it. Uh, because you did the competitive thing for a little while. Yeah. But everything we know you for is outdoors. Yeah. Um, obviously it doesn't seem to be that big of a draw for you anymore. No. Yeah. The competitive side of it. Yeah, not at all. Um, so after my first year of climbing, uh, my old coach kind of like approached me and was like, Hey, um, uh, you know, I'm so-and-so I'd like love to coach you and be a part of this team. And for me, like coming from a swimming background and even my parents were like, well, if you're going to climb, like there's competitions right? Like that was the most obvious step forward. And it didn't seem like in Ontario too, like it seems like the most obvious progression for kids, like through the competition side. Mm -hmm. um, 
but yeah, I competed for a year, year and a half. And like, I was okay. I mean, I was there like flailing and cutting feet on all of the jugs on the roof and occasionally on the slab. Um, but like, I would also get my butt kicked on a lot of things. Like the style is so different. And I didn't really want to put the work into something that I didn't like. Mm. You know, same thing I was saying before, like when I like something, like I go all in on it. So like while team kids were doing slab boulders, I was like over by the moon board like projecting a benchmark that was way too hard for me <laughs> so what was it that you liked was it just the challenge of, of accomplishing the impossible for you at the, at the start of it for climbing yeah yeah like setting a goal and then doing it really fast and I didn't really get that with competition mm -hmm. so like the big turning point for me was in February this year I mean like through the comp season like I had been doing really well outside already and I had a couple bigger projects that I was really excited about and then be kind of like, oh, I've got to like do this whole comp training thing too and like dedicate time to that. Like that's okay. But I went to Vancouver in February for nationals and the day I landed, we got out, got the rental car and I was like, mom, like, do we have anything to do today? She's like, well, we're going to go to the Airbnb now. I'm like, well, what if we went to Squamish? She's <laughs> like, what? I'm like, let's like go and look. And I like, got to the parking lot didn't have the guidebook I just like entered in coordinates to Dreamcatcher I like ran through the grand wall to like try and find it found it and was like whoa like there's Dreamcatcher there's room service there's the hardest boulder problem in the country like that's crazy and seeing that and then you know going the next day and sitting in isolation for five hours while I, like looking out the windows at a beautiful sunny day and just thinking like, wow, like back home, like really crappy climbing would be a two hour drive. And right now, like world-class climbing is an hour drive away. Like, what am I doing here? And the whole competition round, I kind of had that thought in the back of my head. And I had like a really crap semifinal round. And like, I just went out to my coach and I'm like, I'm done. They're like, huh? I'm like, yeah, this like isn't what I want to do. And I went to Squamish the next day and like, I had a blast. Like it was just getting to like, see the two worlds side by side in that instance. And like, not really being forced to choose, but having the option to choose what I wanted to do. That was kind of where I was like, yeah, like competitions are fun, but why would I dedicate my time to it? And like going outside, it's a personal improvement thing. Mm -hmm. For it's like the one thing I don't like about comps is like, I'm sitting in there for five hours to climb like four or five boulders. And on top of that, I'm like training for a year sometimes for like a bigger competition to then, you know, go in there with all of my friends in this like aggressive competition thing where you're kind of like, oh man, like, you know, I did that boulder in four attempts. Like, I hope so and so does it in five so I can make it the finals, you know? <laughs> and I never really liked that side of it. And like, it's not that it's like aggressive competition, but it's kind of there and no one really brings it up, mm -hmm. at least in like from what I remember. So I kind of just like didn't like going and having this like really aggressive competition inside of me against like all of my really close friends and then like not doing well and being like, oh, like what was all that training for? Like why'd I suck, you know? Versus like you go outside and it's like you go put 10 sessions into a really hard boulder problem and you're probably going to do a lot better than session one. Mm -hmm. Like there's almost a guarantee. Like if you put the time and the effort in outside, you'll succeed. Versus the competition scene is like, it's all up in the air. It's just whoever is good on that day. Yeah. And I, I just like, I had enough competition with like swimming. And the reason I left swimming was because of the competition and putting in all that effort. And as soon as it got brought into climbing, I kind of sensed myself like feeling the burnout. And I was like, okay, well, I don't want to stop climbing. So I'm just going to stop competing and I'll see. And then once I stopped, it was like, oh, this is great. Like I'm finally doing what I want. Mm -hmm. Nice. Now yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Obviously because you started in a bouldering gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there a reason why you've never gone into route climbing or rope climbing? Yeah. People have always said I'd be really good because I'm like super lean I come from like endurance sports. Uh, I did like a lot of cross country in high school too. 
And I mean, I started in a bouldering gym and I think I've always just liked the idea of doing like the three hardest moves in a row. Mm -hmm. Like whenever I talk to like my friends at sport climb, it's like, yeah, like I just did this route today. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. But you just like climbed five, eight to like a V9 boulder problem. Like, why wouldn't you just climb the V9 boulder problem? That seems like a lot of wasted time for me. And I I guess it's one of those. Yeah. Where with, like for me, climbing part of the thing is the adventure. Yeah. You know, and, you know, basically, uh, I also like doing it, which yeah. means, like, I like long routes because then I get to do more. <laughs> do more. And my rope climbing friends say, like, the exact same thing to me. I don't know what it is with me, but I have, like, this whole thing for, you know, going to a boulder and trying it for, like, eight hours straight. And I think... Like from the few times I have sport climbed, there's some room for error with movement. But like when I'm bouldering at my limit, everything needs to be perfect. And maybe it is with sport climbing too. And I just haven't had that feeling yet. But like when I've done my hardest boulder problems, like I'm on the wall and I'm flowing through moves Mm -hmm. and they feel like really effortless. And I can feel my pinky like hitting the exact spot that I need. And if my stupid pinky doesn't hit there, then like I'm not doing the boulder. Yeah. I just find like the attention to detail for bouldering is like very specific and there's like cryptic three, four move problems that I need to figure out. And it seems really straightforward, but I like spending a lot of time figuring out how do I make these really short things that are really hard for me feel easy and then do them. Mm -hmm. I think you'd like (laughs) jujitsu. Yeah. (laughs) I say that because Winston's been teaching us those things during COVID and it's very strategic and problem solving and yeah there's for every a lot of movement too and I can have they can go flying and you know it's it doesn't matter you can actually spar you know with people of different sizes and weights It's, it's about physics you know yeah and I find that fascinating it sounds like you might like that too. yeah I've always like joked with uh a couple of friends of mine that like climbing is like MMA and like you know like you watch the old kung fu movies and it's like yeah like climbing is just like that it's just like you know I'm like having a fight with the wall and I have to be able to like flow and find the balance within it to keep moving yeah yeah well and I you know like like as an athlete I've kind of always been a generalist my whole life because yeah I think it's that that you know short attention span so yeah things I've been doing for a long time but I've never become like the best I could at any of them because it's like you know you're doing a bunch of shit but yeah but that's the thing that that you've got and this is what I found with any of the athletes I've coached that have excelled to a really high level um is that they have that kind of like uh pinpoint obsession yeah right I think it's a trait that everyone that's like really good at something has kind of like that addictive personality Yeah. yeah like it's just like yeah 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 whatever i have this thing you know yeah and it's like somebody's like look shiny tinfoil over here this cool thing now it doesn't yeah matter. i have this thing. no totally <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. like yeah i can't fall asleep at night because i like think of a, a certain boulder problem this is like, like it's car shopping right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> thing i need to sort out like we can't have fun until i get this yeah <laughs> yeah like i've noticed when i'm like with the last project with rate of passage low, like when I was really giving it effort, like everything in my life like revolved around that boulder in one way or another, like the days I would take, well, no. Yeah. The days I would rest, like what time I was going to bed, what my skin was doing, you know, like showering with gloves on and like all these really stupid things, like everything would revolve around that boulder problem in one way or another and i would like i would wear my puffy coat outside in 15 degree weather so i could stay warm and i it would look stupid but it was like i was so i could like probably write a whole essay on everything i did on the day that i did the boulder problem that helped me succeed that's interesting so it's not yeah it's not just like i'm gonna go and try harder it's like, I'm going to figure out like every little thing that will make this easier. And that's why I'm going to be good. I'm not necessarily like physically the strongest, but I just try and like make it all work. 
and get everything on my side. What have your parents noticed about you since you've climbed, been climbing? What changes have they seen or growth? Uh, I take the car a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the car is missing quite a bit. Um, oh man, I haven't really talked to them about this, but if I were to guess, um, I think like from what I've noticed through climbing, I've like, climbing's taught me a lot, you know, for life. Like things don't just happen right away. It's like a constant flow and like a slow improvement forward. And I, maybe they would notice that. Um, but yeah, I mean, with like bouldering and like climbing a hard boulder, you know, like you don't just like go in and something is, you can't just like do a single move one day. Maybe you do, but it's like suddenly you're able to like pull off of holds. And then it's like, okay, like the next three sessions later, I can pull off the move and I can like grab this stupid hold. I can't stay on the wall, but my hand is there. And like applying that same process of like, okay, I'm almost there. Like, what can I slowly improve at? Uh, that same process, I kind of like just apply on a daily basis. Like, what can I slowly get better at? Like, what do I need to do? And like, how do I get there? And breaking it down into like every little thing in my mind. It is interesting how there's, you know, they talk about muscle memory. Yeah. Low memory. You know? Yeah, definitely. It's really interesting. Well, yeah. I think one of the things though that this illustrates, like, uh, is that anybody who ever goes, oh man, it must be nice that you can do that. Or it must be, you know, like- No, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, it, but it, yeah. It, it, people need to understand if you want to accomplish anything, like when you look at like sports heroes, cause you know, or yeah. this is anybody doing anything at a high level, but when you see an athlete, whether it's in a competition or you see that awesome video of them pulling off, because- yeah. Most of the time you don't show like, and this is everything of, else. Yeah. It's not one of the things of climbing that unless they've made a documentary about it. Yeah. You don't see all the projecting that went into it. You see the cool Instagram or YouTube video. Yeah. Uh, of them pulling it off. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's sort of one of the things that people need to, to uh, if you want to accomplish anything, yeah. You've got to put There's all the reps lot. in, you know, when yeah. you're looking. Yeah. Yeah, you exactly. Know, to that point. Yeah. I have like, oh man, I don't even know how many gigabytes, probably like upwards of 150, 200 gigabytes of footage from like Rite of Passage Low and like just of the whole summer of me trying it. And there's, oh, I've, yeah, I've just been like, so lazy to do it i really want to get around to like doing a proper video and like short film about it yeah, yeah just because like there's so much that like people really don't know about the process like even things like as stupid as it sounds like getting in my car and like driving home at night and just like just like getting really upset and like really angry at myself and just like a lot of emotions that i wouldn't really even let out on camera just like stuff like that and man like some of those sessions were just like heinous like it would be like early august and the thing about that boulder problem is you need like quite a few pads to do it because like there's a stone staircase like right behind you that you need to protect so like oh, i must have had like eight or nine pads most of the time and there were days where like i would go down with friends for night session we would get there and then people would kind of be like, yo, we've got to like take off. Be like, okay. It's like, I'm going to stay here. It's like, what? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to like keep trying it. And then next thing you know, like I'm in the Glen at like 930 at night by myself with six crash pads. And now I'm like hauling out three pads up the stairs, back down, get three more, like stuff like that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it and just like, I don't know if I've ever been, I don't know if I would say insane, but like there were quite a like few insane things that like really sucked at the time that like looking back on it, it'd be like, oh, like what I do that. You need an agent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. To hire you some uh, 
yeah some helpers yeah <laughs> and, yeah that'd be great <laughs> well but in a sense almost it's it's that kind of thing of like the the you know you were talking about liking suffering right yeah it's mm -hmm. always what we describe as type two fun it yeah it's fun when you're doing it yeah it's fun to think about it afterwards you know and like it, yeah just even in the moment like when i did do the project like holy crap to like do the last jump and hit the hold was like the most euphoric thing i've ever felt like yeah it's one of the best feelings in the world and like when you're working towards it it's like man this sucks but every time i put more effort into something it feels even better after the fact mm -hmm. it's like that same addictive thing like almost chasing the feeling of like feeling really good after doing it but yeah it man just really really good we, we should start a new tradition in outdoor climbing like for things like this is you know how they yeah. have angels for uh backpacking mm -hmm. There should be like climbing angels for people who are projecting. <laughs> they can say, you know, you can you can camp out at our place, our shack. Yeah. You don't have to drive home for two hours. Nice like, yeah. so time you go there, you come, you go back at night, right? Like you're yeah, there were a couple times where did I oh, talk especially that one. I used to live in St. Catharines, so I, I'd be like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm in Cambridge now, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah that that it is it's that kind of thing where where uh people need to really understand like when you see those you know either the cool shot because 90 percent of the time when you see like a cool still photo yeah it's just in the middle so of much a, happening yeah and and a lot of yeah. times staged right yeah like, you see it in the magazines or a cool instagram shot it might yeah, be you like go back, back after better, but they yeah. go back get the shot get the lighting right all that kind of thing um yeah and then when you see that that video of somebody pulling it off yeah uh, it basically what you're seeing is the culmination of so much work so much logistics yeah. eating right and you know getting a bunch of things right on the day yeah you know, like even just having good skin that day oh, you know getting, yeah <laughs> sweet temperature right yeah where like your fingers work but yeah. it's cold enough that they stick yeah i had like one of my tactics for the day i did the boulder was i didn't bring my fan because i didn't want to like waste energy lugging an extra eight pounds and like dropping eight pounds out of my pack on the hike down was maybe what helped <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's like all these thoughts that, yeah, no one really hears about because I can only like, you know, write 500 words on Instagram and I'm too lazy to go like make a blog post about it somewhere. Yeah. And like, who wants to read like, you know, my 20 page essay on my project? <laughs> like, I think it'd be very interesting. You yeah. Know, that's actually the thing though, is that I think for, uh, you know, uh, like fellow climbers or anybody that's yeah inspired by people who who do big things is uh you know other than the, those documentaries you see right you know when you saw yeah. Olo, you, then you started to get a little bit in alex's head okay he his brain isn't like ours and yeah he's willing to to if it's like not doing the climb or dumping the girl it's like bye girl <laughs> you know yeah like, so you see that kind of thing but for most accomplishments yeah you don't like that no totally you yeah know? uh and, and even so then yeah like the final free solo documentaries probably still cut down a lot yeah because well, there's it's, probably tons yeah right. you you got a little bit of his backstory yeah you know? but even then but but it's all of the years of climbing all of the years of free soloing, all of the years yeah. and things that got him there. Yeah. Well, they, they got a two hour movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't even know if it exists, but like I would sit and watch, like if they had footage, uh, like raw footage of the whole climb, you know, from all yeah. the cameras, I would just sit and watch that. <laughs> yeah. It's a total you know? different experience. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's that thing of like watching somebody who gets in that flow state. You yeah. Know, the fact that, that he can stay in that state for, for just so long. Four hours. Yeah. It's kind it's of a really impressive. 
you know yeah it, it, it's almost like the polar opposite in the climbing world of what you do yeah um where it's like super hard and short and condensed yeah you know um any of the individual uh moves on you know free rider that he climbed probably yeah. would uh, except for maybe you probably haven't done a lot of off-wood climbing where you jump half the body in. No. You know, but for you, none of the moves would be that hard. Yeah, but, but it's, then it's to do it, it all, all of that. Yeah. 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 And yeah. doing it and staying in that mental state for so long. Yeah. Like yeah. That's the part that I found fascinating is that he could stay there. Yeah. For so long. Yeah. And I think you get that a little bit with bouldering, but in a very different way. Mm. Like when I was in Waco, I went with my friends, Kellen and Eves. And Eves is like one like great guy, but also probably like the strongest human on earth, like climbing wise, like fingers are ridiculously strong and he's a really strong climber. But, you know, he was down there working this boulder problem, Terre de Sienne. And when we were there, like, one minute we would be having a conversation and like laughing about something and then you could see him like chalk up and you know his mind just flips mm -hmm. and all of a sudden like no one's talking and Eve's is going to get on the wall it's a total different thing and it's something that I still like find I need to improve on is like locking into that mental state mm -hmm. but yeah you wouldn't really see that in a video like you would just see like when he's about to grab the holes and pull on the wall yeah and it's really impressive to see someone who has like the mental control to just like zone everything out and then get on the wall. Like I was, I tend to be really bad with it. Like I had sessions where the session before I did the boulder, I like, it was just, my mind was a mess. And I was like, okay, like everyone needs to like turn the cameras off. And it's like, yeah, they are off. And it's like, no, like put them away. <laughs> and like, for me to say that, like, it's kind of funny because I tend to have like everything filmed and there's always a camera rolling, but like my mind is just a mess. And it's like really impressive to see someone that has that control to just like flip. Like, yeah, it's cool. You can like pull on small holds, but to do it in like any situation just takes like a level of mastery that I haven't reached yet. Is that something that you find is different in climbing than other sports you've done? Um, somewhat maybe i mean with swimming like when i would be at a swim meet you know you know when you're scheduled and slated to go mm -hmm. so i would take a little more time to prepare like i would listen to my music and kind of get in that zone mm -hmm. but with climbing it's like wow i just failed i guess i'll get on the wall in five minutes and then you know five minutes is up and it's like oh okay like I, I'm starting to just, like I found meditation has been really helpful and like different breathing patterns and stuff to just like sit under a boulder and breathe and like do a lot of visualization. Yeah. But it's something that I was like really bad at for a long time with climbing. Yeah, like it's- I'm gonna give you some advice, not that, you know. Yeah, no, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it works. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, when I'm afraid of a climb, I'm like, you know, I don't want to fall and scrape my face against that. Yeah. I pick myself out. And I'm like, I'm a little kid. I'm at a playground. I'm so excited to be here and just go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like enjoying the moment is yeah. like I find when I did Rite of Passage Low, I found I just needed to like step back, check my ego and just like enjoy the process. Like same thing, like a little kid at the playground and just yeah. be like, yeah, like happy to be there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's like night and day. Yeah, because fundamentally, even though you have to work super hard, if you don't enjoy the process. I'm yeah, you're not gonna perform well. Yeah, and, and you yeah. also you only got one life, so it's like you're spending all this time doing something you don't enjoy. Yeah. Like, then like why bother? Yeah. So and I think yeah. I think that's one of the other things is too many people are chasing the result. Yeah. And don't like give the process of getting there right yeah and enough credit yeah say it's the journey not the destination and and that, that's so cliche that nobody breaks it down yeah that's, but it is true is in basically enjoying the reps enjoying yeah. the practice enjoying the the process of getting there yeah right because you spend way more time doing that than you do 
at the destination. Yeah. Yeah, when, like when you with this route, when you got the last hold, right? Yeah. From completing it to when you're back on the ground, like how long did you have? Probably like under a minute from like when I pulled on the wall to when I did it, like yeah, like under a minute. And that was like one of the longer boulder problems too. Yeah. Like that was you know, like 18 moves or so, maybe probably less. I don't remember exactly how many. Yeah, it was sticking around. One. <laughs> no. Five. Um, now, basically, would that yeah. be like the hardest route, like Boulder in Ontario? Uh, I think so. I know Eves has a 13 out in Calabogie, which I didn't find out until recently. But yeah, I think it would be. I mean, it hasn't been repeated yet, so, like, there's no grade confirmation. But, like, from seeing enough, like, strong people try it and, like, the fact that the stand start had gone 20 years without being done, like, yeah, as much as it felt, like, you know, not as hard in the moment, like, I find I have to step back and be like, well, it didn't feel hard because I did it perfectly. Like, there's a lot of time that went into it. Well, yeah, and, like, how many attempts did you put working on it? Oh, man, like, like from the bottom? Probably, yeah. like, gosh, I don't know. I probably gave it, like, anywhere from three to, like, ten tries from the bottom for ten sessions. So, like, depending on the session. Sometimes I would get there, try it a few times, and be like, this doesn't feel great, and I would, like, work other moves just to like get it dialed in but like the fact that i first tried that boulder probably a year and a half ago and it felt impossible to like yeah there's just a lot of effort that went into it but from the ground i probably gave like anywhere from like 50 to like a hundred 50 to 80 attempts from the bottom yeah, and then was just on like the low start. Yeah, and then like yeah, add in the time that I did the high start and everything else. Like it adds up. Yeah, yeah. and that and it's that thing where um, because obviously most people who who listen aren't going to be, you know, climbing at that level or anything. But it, it, yeah, it, takeaway really is just if you want to accomplish something, you got to work at it. Like and, yeah, and work at it when you think you've worked at it enough and you haven't accomplished it you haven't even scratched the surface yet yeah exactly no. like now i'm at the point where before this like the longest i had worked on anything was probably between like 10 to 15 sessions and then it was like okay well i'll put 20 into something what can i do with 20 mm -hmm. and then now i'm like what happens if i spend an entire year dedicated to training for like one specific boulder problem like how achievable can this really hard thing be Mm -hmm. If I really put like not just sessions into it, but dedicated training and like targeted programming, you know, like what can happen now? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm sure like once I do that, it'll be like, okay, well, like what if I repeated that same step again, but then added one more thing, like then what's possible? So like the new norm just becomes a little harder each time. Mm -hmm. so, so, so what are you targeting now? Uh, I mean, a lot specifically, uh, I mean, like grade wise, if you're going to look at grade, like V15 is next yeah. and climbing a bunch of other V14s too. But there's this boulder problem in Bishop called Lucid Dreaming, which is like basically three hard moves on really small holds. Um, and like hasn't been, it's basically been done by like a lot of pro climbers and pretty much no one else. So it's kind of like the next step is it was like, I don't know, March, April, like I just watched tons of climbing videos and I found myself like going back over and over to watch like Alex Magos on Lucid Dreaming because it's crazy. It's literally just, you know, pretty much three hard moves and then like a 40 foot slab. Um, but in the past, ever since I did stairwell, or write a passage low, I was kind of like, oh, maybe like that's something that I could do. Mm -hmm. And I haven't really been bold enough to like take a step forward because it's like, well, I can't really go there right now. Like what would the point be? And then 
in the past month for some reason i've just like convinced myself that it would be possible and just like oh, i watched that like i've watched all four videos of it or five like many many times like probably i watch a video of that boulder like once a day if not more <laughs> um and i like fall asleep yeah. like yeah well that's the thing it's like pretty straightforward um but yeah now i've gotten to the point where like that's the thing i want to do and so i'm sitting here in canada not being able to go to bishop so i'm like okay well like what can i do so i set a simulator of the boulder and then i was like i don't know if this is quite right like let me i want to make sure that this is accurate so then i messaged someone in bishop and was like hey I'm thinking of like doing this boulder next year. Like, can you, you know, like go out and get measurements of hold distances and take photos of the holds for me? And they're like, yeah, totally. So now on my wall, like I have a whole map of like inch per inch, like, you know, like start hold is here. And then like one inch over and 22 inches up is the next hold. And then an undercling is right beside it. And then 29 inches over and 40 inches up is this pinch. And then 18 inches right and 18 inches up is the crimp. Like I have it all mapped out and then all the distances between holds on like a triangular grid. And then now I have that on my wall. So the movement is replicated perfectly other than like the angle is a little off because no wall is obviously like perfectly flat. Um, so now I have the simulator and then it's like, okay, well, how can I make this even better? And then like, I was stuck in kind of like that Instagram loop one day of scrolling and there's this company in Tennessee, Render Climbing, who like 3D scans climbing holds and replicates them. And I saw they had like uh, this, like the crimp and the undercling on Lucid Dreaming. And I was like, just sent them a message and was like, hey, do you guys still have the mold for this? And like, do you have scans of the other holds? They're like, yeah, we have them, but we just haven't put them into production. And then like, I've probably been talking to them for a month and then now like the first of the holds is finally on its way. So mm -hmm. I'm basically like, I haven't ever done this with any other boulder problem. Like when I, when we were talking about like different tactics to like level up, like, yeah, getting 3D scans of the holds to have the exact holds is like definitely a level up. Well, and so, so and get mileage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the boulder problem will pretty much be in my basement, which is cool um and so doing all these things like make it seem a little more achievable so that's kind of the big goal is is that boulder problem which is funny because it's like the furthest thing from sport climbing other than the fact that it's really big but it just distills down to three moves so mm -hmm. i'm yeah i'm gonna try and dedicate like a whole year to like three singular moves and see what can happen well you know, on that note, like, I got to say, I admire your, you know, drive and dedication. Yeah, <laughs> thank and you. That, that yeah. Focus it, yeah. It, and I've always been in awe of, like, climbers who focus on that. Because, like, I've just never had the mindset for it. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah, you know, and, it, and yeah. it's an interesting thing to talk to people who, like, just are wired that way. Yeah. Know? Um. Like I do all sorts of things because just, you know, when you talk about, you know, not being able to sleep, uh, yeah. focus on that boulder, I just can't shut my fucking brain off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, it really is kind of a fascinating sort of glimpse into how you accomplish these things. Uh, yeah. You know, whereas, you know, I would look, because when you're talking Bishop, is that Bishop, California? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. In the um, buttermilks. Yeah. So I'm looking yeah. at like the big peak. Yeah, you're looking at Yosemite, just like a little bit. You know, I want away. a big multi pitch, so I spend a whole day. Yeah. But then it's yeah. the next one, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, and, it, and, it, and essentially, like a, a lot of those multi pitch climbs are vertical hikes. Yeah. You know, in a sense. Yeah, it's like a different type of suffering. Yeah. You know, yeah, like when I can't sleep at night, it's because like I'm thinking about how good it would feel to like do like this, this, and then do the 50 foot slab, and like how great it would feel to like stand up there, yeah, like knowing I had done it, like that's what I'm kind of chasing, and also like chasing the idea of the process and going through that mm -hmm. because it's not like I can just like you know work on my simulator, it's like 
it's different. I can't just keep doing the same thing for a year because like I'll only like improve so much. Like I might plateau. So it's like, okay, like what's something new that's going to stimulate my mind? Let's like learn how to train for this thing. Let's get replica holds. Like let's switch it up and like make this interesting and yeah. just like get totally obsessed with it. Yeah. So basically the takeaway for anybody listening, like if you want to get good at anything. Yeah. You, Obsession. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a combination of being obsessed and don't get hurt. Yeah. But in Which is, I think that's another big factor has been like, yeah, I realized that I'm going to like try and do this really hard thing. The biggest factor is going to be like pushing myself hard enough that I can get stronger, but also not push so hard that I get injured and then yeah. can't do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and work on that finger flexibility. <laughs> yeah, just like rice bucket all the time and break down that scar tissue. So, Ethan, thanks for being on. Yeah, uh, well, thank you for having me. No, yeah. and uh, basically, uh, where can people like follow you? What's your oh, name? okay. Uh, yeah, my Instagram is just Ethan Salvo. You can find me there. Uh, oh, what else do I have? I mean, like, a bunch of us have a YouTube channel, Smokey Boys. Like, if you just look up my name, you'll probably find a bunch of bouldering videos awesome. uh, on YouTube. We'll put it in the show notes. Yeah, sweet. But other than that, yeah, thank you guys so much again. It's a pleasure to chat. Yeah, no, get training. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right here on yep. those same three moves. <laughs> yeah. All right, take care. So yeah, until we'll have a great done. night. Yeah. Work hard. Play dirty. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you guys.